ladies and gentlemen, and a very good evening to our dignitaries on stage. Dun & Bradstreet, the world's leading provider of business information, knowledge, and insight, in association with LIC of India, is pleased to announce the release of the seventh edition of its publication titled India's Leading BFSI Companies 2015 that highlights the increasing role of technology and new delivery channels in India's BFSI sector. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Kaushal Sampa. This is the seventh year of the publication and it is a matter of great pride for me when I say that for the past six years, we have seen tremendous support from the BFSI sector for this initiative of Dun & Bradstreet. Our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, launched the Pradhan Mantri Jan Dhan Yojana for promoting financial inclusion in August last year. According to the government's estimates, a whopping 99.74% of households in India have thus been covered under this scheme. This is indeed a commendable achievement for this to be sustainable and to be profitable. Servicing this large base of accounts is going to be possible only through digitization and automation of financial transactions. I would like to thank all the BFSI companies that have participated in the publication and shared information with us and met with us, and I wish each one of you the very best for the future. Thank you. Distinguished invitees uh, and distinguished speakers on the stage, and let me uh, take you back to some 30, 40 years, rewind. Insurance was sold by life insurance agent. He was successful only because of his guts. He had guts, but less of data. Fast forward, 1995-2005, two things happened in the life insurance industry. One was the arrival of computer on a large scale. Second was the arrival of a competitor for LIC. And now we are in the la third stage, the most critical one, the cloud, the big data, and the digital technology. All I would like to say is digital technology is going to be the in thing in the days to come. And in insurance industry, in BFSA sector, I think if we are missing those signals, we'll be missing one of the greatest opportunities. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure uh, for me to be here in this conference. Uh, while most of you would be thinking, you know, this is a banking conference, this is a BFSI conference, and what's a telco going to, you know, do here, and what is uh, he going to talk about? So let me build the perspective. Uh, so BFSI from the eyes of a telco. So, so that's the theme I would try to build. Telecom, uh, with its now advent of a 3G and a 4G rollouts going all across India, uh, the power in the hands of the consumers in terms of the phones that they carry uh, and the network, the capability of networks to deliver a bandwidth or a higher uh, bandwidth transactions uh, anywhere in the country increase. So that's when, you know, uh, both these sectors have to merge together, have to come together to chart a course for next uh, 10 years. The way telecom networks are evolving and the kind of uh, capabilities are getting built in uh, to deliver high quality of services, I think that's going to be the game changer. And uh, this is the right time that if uh, telecom and banks jointly develop products and solutions which India needs, so that's when we will truly have a digital India and a make in India successful uh, in the way we want it to be. Thanks a lot. The discussion over here is basically uh, what is in store for BFSI with technology moving ahead 10 years from now, for any financial product, the search starts on the net. And then uh, you are guided by something which is now a fad, uh, which is called uh, online customer advocacy. So when we're talking about a financial organization, creating that customer delight where you are actually creating a, a customer who will go back to your products through any kind of uh, domain. So that is the biggest challenge, uh, I feel. And um, going ahead, uh, there are some mega trends that we are looking at. Uh, we are, of course, looking at uh, 
banks or for that matter any BFSI company focusing largely on their core business and most of the non-core will be outsourced. So that is where the, the, the dependency or uh, the opportunity, I would rather say, uh, of us uh, who are the technology providers increases in the future. Thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. You have seen all the transformation of last four decades, right from total manual banking to uh, branch automation, then total branch automation, core banking, and now complete uh, range of uh, delivery channels available to us. The banking is the biggest service provider today who has been investing in this only as a cost. I don't think that any banker has ever been able to really work out what is the return on investment. Today you have got more than 120,000 banks branches. You have got almost 170,000 ATMs, 125,000 micro ATMs, and of course what you heard about the, the mobile density. With all that enablement, I think the usage, if it has to grow, it could be possible only through uh, the engagement with the customers on the literacy part. And that is possible only when all the stakeholders come together and work for it. Probably we are all talking in isolation. I am a service provider. I will talk of the strength of the technology and I will enable. Mere enablement is not really going to make the execution. The real challenges are the execution, which I think we all of us will have to collectively look at, keeping in mind the affordability part of it, keeping in mind the security part of it. Thank you very much. There are so many companies which are actually going after the people to really offer savings products, which everybody wants. But there's no actively a banker sitting and marketing it or really trying to mobilize it. So what has happened? People are investing in those, in this huge informal financial sector that we have outside our very well-regulated system. So how do we, as BFSI sector, tap that with the help of the technology? The second thing is that cash, using cash, has to become costly. You have to make it cheaper to use the mobile, cheaper to use a cashless system, payment system. The third point I'd like to make is it cannot really happen to, through big brick and mortar branches. So you are going to have to have the agency model. We have to build up that network of loyal agents for banks and for the telecoms, and to have some kind of links which actually uh, engage a telecom agent with the bank agent and how do we really interact. But most importantly, I think we have to know our customers' needs and the final story. And if you give people what they want, they will take it. How have they taken to mobiles? I mean, just look at the way our country has taken, the, taken up the mobiles. And every age, every age and every type of person, illiterate women, literate women, it doesn't matter. Literacy does not seem to be a bar. So now with all what we have, the infrastructure that we have in place, the MPCI, the UIDI, the USSDA, and everything, I mean, I think for the next two years we should just fly. And on that note, I'll conclude my remarks. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, with, the, with that, we come to the formal release of the publication India's Leading BFSI Companies 2015 from Dun & Bradstreet and LIC of India. I'd like to now request all our dignitaries to kindly do the honors. Ladies and gentlemen, we present India's Leading BFSI Companies 2015 from Dun & Bradstreet and LIC of India. Politics. And politics in India has taken a decisive turn. 
a turn that will impact you and your business. Join me, Sagarika Ghosh, as I decipher the changing political landscape in New Delhi. Catch Capital View with me, Sagarika Ghosh, only on ET Now. Life so lovely, live life happily. Plan your life the way you want it to be. Invest to save and get insurance. LIC's new endowment plan offers a combination of protection and savings. Bring home eternal happiness. BSC, India's most admired derivatives exchange. Very warm welcome ladies and gentlemen to this panel discussion on transforming the banking financial services as well as insurance industry and gearing up for the year 2024. We have an esteemed panel with us this evening and our objective of course is to discuss uh, the criteria of technology on improving operational efficiency uh, in the BFSI sector and how to really build a demand as well as business to meet new age demands. So with that said, uh, Mr. Tang Saleh, first question to you. Um, highlight or flag some of the key trends and technological innovations in banking that has helped create uh, value as well as revenue. Well, uh, I think the banking industry has adopted almost uh, every possible delivery channel uh, which technology could support. And uh, I think every activity is certainly making a revenue sense because when you uh, discuss uh, revenue, uh, you'll have to look at that uh, what kind of uh, facilitation you have been able to uh, look at in the process part of it uh, while doing the banking and how, what kind of uh, uh, I mean facilitation and convenience you are offering to the customer. Uh, Mr. Moses, you've also um, you know, uh, keenly tracked uh, the osmosis and the evolution as an economist. Uh, in terms of technology per se, how do you believe the BFSI sector has adopted a technology to respond to the changing consumer demographic? While we talk about the return on asset, banking was mostly a financial intermediation business. So we were doing business carrying credit risk and using the asset. Mm -hmm. So the productivity and efficiency of the banking service was not that good. So we moved to product and services which were not carrying credit risk and not using the assets of the uh, bank. So the transaction banking uh, business evolved and transaction banking without technology is a non-starter. So the bank started creating revenue without using the risk-weighted asset. Thereby, the business was translating, moving away from credit risk to operations risk. Operations carrying the business content and the regulatory content. So overall, as we move forward, the banking business has been evolving from financial mediation to holistic services. Banking were leveraging the customer and the brick and mortar branches through building distribution and payment businesses with the concept that what you do not manufacture, you buy and distribute so that it uh, improves the efficiency of the bank. Prasad, the, in terms of um, you know, the technological innovations, mobility is something that has really caught on more than social and cloud and even data analytics at the moment. Uh, how closely have you worked with the BFSI sector uh, to cater uh, to their needs in terms of acquiring as well as retaining customers? You know, with a 3G, 4G coming and the mobile phones being at 94 crore hands, uh, typically you can uh, use, the, use this forum or this particular platform to get your customers at least onboarded as an account. For example, you can actually open a bank account through a mobile screen. And we have some of the banks which we are working with uh, right now to look at that kind of platform. A lot of data analytics that is coming out uh, and use the data analytics to probably help them get the right banking and the right products. So these are the two or three areas that we will be seriously working on, apart from the bank opening, opening experience that we can bring it on to mobile. Okay. Moving away a bit from uh, the customer, uh, Shabankar, um, as a service provider, both in terms of hardware as well as software solutions, uh, how closely have you tracked the fact that productivity has increased and service costs have uh, reduced? I think uh, cost optimization uh, for uh, any player in the banking space 
uh, would definitely be of prime importance and technology would be the platform where they will drive this cost optimization for